Hey, you know who it is. It's Game Guy Goldie, the one and only. And it's another episode of You See It. Don't hate the player, learn the game, where I bring my player partners and player individuals to come kick some game. This is a special episode, a joint episode. It's my podcast, but it's also his podcast. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Yes, sir. Megan McQueen, Aqua Neck, bro. Okay, Splish Splash. In the building right now, we finna kick some cold game for you young, for you young Negros out there at home. All right? I'm trying to avoid the cussing right now. Right, you know right. Because we ain't trying to edit. Hey, it let's let them know though. Like, bro, we we be kicking it. We just be we be sitting around and just be kicking game politics, and we always say, man, we're on camera. And for sure. And like we was talking about at the gym yesterday, low key with this content right now, I didn't even realize we really be fathering these negros out there, bro. You know what I'm saying? These dudes be so lost, bro. We was at the gym yesterday. Dudes was coming to talk about, damn, bro, what you said about that girl was some facts. I said, what, yeah. what, which clip? Yeah. And he said, oh, bro, I mean, I don't know which one it was, but it was about a girl, and that was some real stuff. Like, damn, y'all are really that lost? Now, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was there at one point, but these is grown-ass Negroes in here. You know what I'm saying? Anyways. You know, and to speak on that, man, I felt like that most of my life. You know, I lost my father young, so mm. my entire life I was looking for a father figure, looking at how to be a man, and I was getting thrashed around by these women because I had no game. So, you know, when my uncle moved down the street, he was a player and gave me the game, you know, it changed my life forever. Mm. And so, you know, I understand everybody ain't get that lucky to have a player uncle come move down the street from him. So we yeah. out here doing God's work and for trying sure. to give it to him. If you didn't get it, man, we gonna give it to you. Yeah, and it feels good for real. Because like you said, I I didn't, you was lucky to have your uncle. I didn't have that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, even me, I was a late bloomer. I learned, I, I'm, I'm still learning. Even just kicking it with you, I be learning, uh, you know what I'm saying, adding stuff to my oh, bag. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a never ending journey. Exactly, game, exactly, you know hell yeah. So man, let's kick it off, man. What we, what we, what we talking about? I got one right here, man. We was talking about this at the gym yesterday. And but nah, man, this is, this is one that we continuously talk about every time we link yeah. up. But every single time we spend some time apart, and I continue to live this, play the damn video game of life. Yeah, it just becomes more and more of a of a of such a serious and 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 relevant topic. And that is, you really find out how useless most of these are. Yeah. Okay. When you remove lust from the situation, these like go I, go ahead because I, no, I already no, no, know. you go you go first. I'm gonna piggyback off of it because this is women, bro. They you really realize. When you gain control over your lust and you don't care about the, you don't care about getting some, you don't care about their looks at all, right? You realize that that is literally 95% of their value, right? And I mean, that's obviously a known thing that we talk about all the time. But the reason why I say it with such emphasis is because you, you realize most of these women, they get away with so much from these niggas because of that. So when you just make the, when you're the one nigga yeah. that does not care, you realize they have nothing, <laughs> nothing. They ain't got, you know what I'm saying? Like they're literally useless. Yeah. And I'm not saying all of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, I'm, I'm saying that there's definitely some women out there that are definitely useful. There's definitely some, the right woman is definitely going to be an asset to you for sure. But obviously we know nine times out of 10, that's not the case. Most yeah. of these so. I'm saying that though, like you really take when you take those goggles, that lo those lust goggles off, you really realize how much, how many women are really genuinely powerless. And, you know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna take it even deeper than that, right? Okay. It's not just the fact that the women are useless; it's that men have been programmed in society to not even look for value in a woman. See, a mm -hmm. woman, it doesn't matter where she grows up. Mm. She's trained to look for a man who has value, whether it's monetarily, whether it's status. Oh, uh, your, her grandma will tell her, hey, well, what type of job does he have, right? Mm -hmm. These things matter to a woman at a young age. They're programmed to look for somebody who adds value to their life. Right. A man is programmed to look for a woman with no nothing else other than her and, and sex, right? Yeah. Nobody comes up to you and say, oh, well, make sure what type of job does she have or make sure she could. No, it's we've been programmed to not require anything from women. So that's a program, first off. Yeah. So therefore, you're not even looking. And most of the time, you're looking for a woman to take care of. We're almost programmed to have to find a woman that's deficient for us to take care of. And yeah. that's why we changed the narrative. See, my ideology when I was coming up is the woman has to have requirements to deal with me. Right. What is she useful for? What can she do for me? And if she mm -hmm. can't do nothing for me, then she's useless. But that's a mm -hmm. different mindset. Mm -hmm. So like in the game, I talk about it all the time. I talked about it with Ken. You know, it's called a choosing fee mm -hmm. and an interview fee mm -hmm. in the game. 
right? This is the mindset in the game. It's yeah. the opposite of the rest of the world. This is stepping outside the matrix, right? Exactly. For a woman to even have an interview with you to see if she wants to be in your household, mm -hmm. she has to come with an interview fee, okay. which means she has to come up with something monetarily so she doesn't waste your time Chores. to show value. Right. And if she wants to come into your household, she has to give you a larger sum of money. Which is what, the choosing show, fee? Yep, yep okay. to show that she's serious about dealing with you. Okay. It's requirements, right? And then once she gets with you, she has to be useful, right? right? In that interview, every woman just, just got some money, can't deal with you. Mm -hmm. What can you do? What's your mindset like? Can you produce? Can you be of value and an asset to this organization, to this family that we have, right? right. And that's the mindset that I came up with. Mm -hmm. So when I see these dudes out here dealing with women for the only reason that they look good, man, it, it baffles me. And that's the reason most dudes is in this situation. But it's like you said, when you strip most of these women down, what is she really doing for your life? Most of the time, she's taken away. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Taken away, okay? And I, it's funny. I was talking about this the other day really just by myself honestly in my mind but like that's why when me and you link up i just get to we just get yeah. to talking about this shit. but yeah. it's like bro this goes back to what you was talking about you talk about this on your videos all the time and i have really been using this and implementing this in my everyday life wow. in the gym everywhere on this anywhere everywhere i go you know what i'm saying and that is like really stripping these girls down oh, yeah. of like take the titties away yeah, yeah, take yeah, the yeah. ass that's, away that's take the lips away take the fillers away take the makeup hey, away take a take the damn weed you know, it's, it's a gift and a curse i came up like that so i yeah. i took women from the gutter that's a part of the game you take a woman put a wig on a pig as they would say mm -hmm. you know and take a woman from nothing i've done that i've took in the, the somebody that you wouldn't even think Fat, this, that, and the third, you know, got the BBL, got the lipo, got the nose done, got, you know, dressed her up, put all the ornaments on her, and now she's able to go out there and catch herself a rapper, catch herself a rich dude. Mm. So I've done that so much. Most dudes look at a bad broad. He don't even see the work that she got done, but because I've done it so many times, I know exactly what she got done. I could right. look at a woman, oh, she, she yeah. got this done, she got this done, she got this done. I can calculate how much it costs. So it don't impress me yeah. because I know that that's bought. Mm. And if it's bought, then we could put a value on it, but most of these dudes overvalue it. We mm -hmm. can say it was ten thousand dollars to get all that done, maybe even twenty at the most. But guess what? I'm gonna value it at twenty thousand dollars, which <laughs> is really nothing. These dudes value it like it's a million dollars. She's not. And but let me take it real back, real quick. When we talking about value, we can't put it all on a woman. Oh, these women have no value. Well, guess what? It's the man's job to get the value out the woman. See. Everybody can, people can have different things, but it's what you get out of it. You can have a business, I can have a business, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know how to extract the value from that business? Two people gotta have the same opportunity. Somebody's gonna extract the value out of it, somebody's not. These dudes have not been taught Number one, what's most valuable about a woman, which is not her body, unless you're putting her out on the street to, to, to sell herself, exactly. right? So they haven't even been taught what's valuable about a woman, and then they don't know how to extract that value. See, I know how to extract that value from a woman. So a lot of times you say, oh, this woman has no value. Okay, innately she has no value, but if she's fucking with a nigga like me, let me redo that, because I you know. But if she's well, dealing with, well, <laughs> yeah, I'm too much. I, I, but if she's dealing with a man like me, who has the right mind to understand how I could extract that value from her, then she could be valuable. But most of these dudes don't even understand that. When you have a woman on your same type of time who likes you enough and you know how to pour into her with the right books, with the right information, understand like what's valuable about her, you could extract a lot of value from a woman, but these dudes don't know how to do nothing but catch a woman. But see, in the game, it's a saying. Your work start once you get her. Most of these dudes do all this work to get her, then don't know what to do with her, yeah. right? You have to know how to get her, and then once you get her, that's when the job really starts, and you got to know what to do with her. And most of these dudes have never been taught what to do with a woman. They just sit there and kick it. Do you not understand how valuable a human life force is? Yeah. If you can get yourself a human life force to dedicate her entire life force oh, yeah, to that's you, powerful. do you know what you can accomplish in life? Yeah. But these dudes will get an entire life force and just do nothing with it. Mm -hmm. Just let her do this, you just kicking it. I'm gonna get myself a woman, and that entire life force, I'm going to direct it in the direction of my goals, my dreams, and aspirations, and I'm gonna make miracles happen. Put her on we're program. always better than one. Mm -hmm. But these dudes have never heard this information, so this is what we coming with. Yeah. It's not just, oh, she's not valuable. Yeah, she's not valuable with you, but that same broad that you got, when she start me, you gonna be like, damn. Yeah. See, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. Like, when I was first coming up, right, you know, I'd have a broad, and then she, you know, uh, you know, when I was coming up, I'd have a woman, you know, she'd leave for whatever reason, go deal with another dude. 
and I'm seeing her with him and she's check, just checking it in. And I'm like, damn, how he doing that and getting that out of her? And I wasn't getting none of that out of her. And it made me study. It made me develop my game to understand, man, he had the same broad I had, but he's getting way more out of her than mm -hmm. I was because my game wasn't there. That's why we got to lace these dudes with game because you'll see a woman that seemingly doesn't have any value, but you have the right mind, you have the right tools, you have the right game, and you could find a way to extract some value out of her so she can become valuable to you. So let me ask you this. Do you feel like you could do that with any bitch or? I mean, I, I know myself, I can do it with any woman. There's not a woman on this planet that I can do these. No, 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 no. I hear what you're saying. I'm not going to do it, mm -hmm. right? But I could. I have so much value, so much game, so much information. I'm not saying it's gonna, she's going to give me so much value. But yeah. I'm saying any woman that even gets around me, just by happenstance, by proximity, she's going to be better and give me some value. But I'm not going to do it, though. I had a mentor one time, man, and I was dealing with this problem from this broad I had for a few years. And I was like, man, you know, it's so hard. Do you think I could turn it around? He looked at me and said, listen, you can but it's gonna take so much out of you, nigga, you're not gonna be able to do anything else with any other broad and you probably gonna quit after that, exactly. right? So it's one of those things. I could do it and most of these dudes could do it to any woman, but why would you wanna do it to a woman that makes it hard? You would rather know what you're looking for, find the perfect woman with the right characteristics and you'll be able to get the most out of her and it's not gonna take so much out of you. Exactly. You get what I'm saying? Oh, for sure, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I was just trying to make sure- that But no, what you're saying, like we talk about all the time, I agree 100%, most of these women at face value really come and offer absolutely nothing. nothing. That's why I'd be like, but what are you gonna do for me though? Exactly, like, bitch, you can't come over here and tell me, oh, I'm a, I'm a cook and I'm a clean. I say it all the time. Who do you think I am? You think I'm a bum? Yeah. Man, I, Maria come for $200 a week and she clean. Mm -hmm. my, my meal preps come every week for $250. Mm -hmm. What the f do you think I need you for that? Mm -hmm. I don't even want my bitch to do that. I don't want my bitch to clean. I don't want my bitch to cook. If she's really my, bitch, you got. The things that we're doing in life are way more valuable than you wasting your time on minimum wage tasks. I would rather us pay somebody to do that minimum so we can do whatever we're doing. If nothing more than we just sitting here talking and I'm enjoying your company and you're enjoying mine rather than doing some minimum wage tasks. That's nothing. Exactly. I had a bra one time, man, pissed me off. I came to our house. Man, listen, we go into the bathroom. It's like a little box, uh, uh, like a faucet. Yeah. It's like a box of a faucet. Yeah. She's going to say, uh. I want to see if you a handyman. Do you know how to do that? I said, Peace. I said, I can, but I will absolutely not do that. I did not come over here to <laughs> fix and prove something exactly. to you. I, li listen, do you know how much money I make? That is beneath me yeah. to even come in here. And eat, let's just say I didn't know how to do it. Okay. That don't take no sweat off me. These dudes, these women be like, oh, can you, can you fix a tire? Can you do this? Do you, can I do minimum wage uh, manual tasks? Yeah beneath me don't right. judge a man based off if he could physically do some shit my mind is way bigger than that exactly. you get what i'm saying and it was disrespectful to me because how dare you have me come over here then want to put me to work when you should be caring about sitting down with me getting to know me uh enjoying my company seeing what wisdom was this I like the first time y'all linked up or like second second time, time? okay like, trying to put a test on me. yeah Just exactly knock it off. right right <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> like playing them stupid Game. like that right. like that my, like my manhood is, is equated if i could fix some stupid yeah. ass shit on task exactly. rabbit and right. find a nigga to and come that just going to tell you how stupid that yeah was. Like some shit she heard on tv all oh, give a nigga a, a, like exactly. come on man exactly this bitch, i'll pay the dude on task rabbit to come over here while i'm in here chilling and kicking it with you because i value the information that we can discuss more than some other manual See, tasks and you know what that leads me to my next point that just goes to show how much these girls are so unaware of what's truly valuable in a man. Okay? Exactly. A lot of these girls, I mean, look, like like you were saying, bro, man, at this point, nigga, I'm not, I'm not chasing no These bitches got to chase me because I look at it like this, nigga. Why am I chasing something that is less valuable than me? Why am I chasing something that is literally, I'm, I'm chasing something to make that thing, you talked about this all the time, yeah. but I, I really use this and I'm like really changing the algorithm daily now. And it's like, why am I chasing something that is not only less valuable than me, but I'm chasing it to make that thing more valuable because that life, that girl, whatever girl gets with me, her life is going to become more valuable. She's going to get more game. She's going to grow mentally, spiritually, physically, financially. She's going to get some that she has never gotten from any other nigga. I don't care how much money that uh, another nigga has gotten hers. How, how much money, uh, money and, and, and how much this nigga, this motherfucking uh, sugar daddy bought her. The, the, the game alone, like you be talking about, bro, the game and the mindset alone is going to change everything for her. Well, while, while she's not going to do 
it for me, it's going to be more or less the same, I mean, right? It, what you're saying is so simple, but people are so backwards, they just take at face value. Oh, you're supposed to chase a woman because that's what you're supposed to do. Who the f said so? Oh, exactly. See, <laughs> see, people don't think for themselves. I think for myself. And since I came up in a lifestyle that was anti-establishment, anti-everything, you know, we didn't respect nothing. We would sit and laugh at the squares like, y'all doing this shit backwards. That yeah. same broad that you letting you tell you this, that, and the third, man, she coming, she bringing me this, she bringing me that. So I've always had this mindset that I just, I don't follow what, society says you should do because if you ask me if you really just think about it it's it's very simple and logical why would somebody with more value chase somebody with less value most of the time the man is going to change the woman's life the man is going to make that woman's life better that man could exchange that woman out for any other woman and his life is going to be the same yeah. so why would somebody more valuable chase somebody less valuable to change their life it doesn't make any sense yeah. logically the person less valuable who can get value from somebody should be chasing the person who can give them value. Exactly. Walmart don't be like out on the street, hey, can you come work for me? Hey, can you come? No, because they're the one giving the check. Yeah. So they stay where they are and it's an application and you have to fit these requirements to come fuck with Walmart. Mm -hmm. And the bra come try to deal with me and try to give me an ultimatum. Like, trying, trying to negotiate I'm the program. Like, on, like bitch, you, you coming into the program, bitch. Like, come on, that's you know not saying? how this works. Yeah. You don't go to Walmart and get to telling them what you will right. and won't do. Right. No. Right. This is the requirements. You can get with it or you can get lost. But most right. of these dudes, Take your they don't the understand target. they value. Right. These niggas out here riding motherfucking Rolls Royces and motherfucking big time shit, million dollar companies, chasing a woman who barely graduated high school. Yeah. Like, how does that make sense in the slightest? In the slightest. You get what in I'm the saying? Slightest. So, yeah, bro. You know, it's just a mindset shift. And that's what I always talk about is understanding your value. Yeah. And do a king go out there and chase the peasant? No. no all the king do is present himself. That's and it. the peasant recognize like that's shit. It. But, you know, it's programming. You think of... Uh, uh, Cinderella, man, they indoctrinating. You got a motherfucking mm. prince running mm. around. I say that shit all the time. Disney pe peasant man. all goddamn day. Mm, See, so from from a child, yeah. you think that shit makes yeah. sense? How the fuck? Subconsciously, is a, I'm a yeah. I'm ch running around chasing this. You the motherfucking prince and chasing now. the bitch around the damn Come city. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> you know, it's all it's, no. all it's all a program. Yeah, and so and I'm glad you said it because it's just like, like I said, going back to the thing about like how these women have no idea what is truly valuable. I look at it like this, man. If I'm walking by you, and we talked about this at the gym yesterday, but like now, and I'm not going to sit here and act like I always thought this way. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was one of the niggas that was indoctrinated, thinking that I was supposed to be the one chasing the bitch, the one supposed to be pursuing, the one that's supposed to be impressing the hoes. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, letting these girls make me think that if I'm not doing that, I'm somehow less of a man, right? But now, right, like you said, you get to a point where if you're actually working on yourself actively every day, okay, and you're really growing as a man, you start to really realize your value. If you're doing the inner work, you're doing the outer work, you're doing every single thing that you can to grow as a man, you gain this inner confidence that you can't, you can't replicate unless you are actually doing the work, right? So then you start to realize your motherfucking value. And then you start to look around, you like, wait a minute. Why am I chasing something that is not giving me anything motherfucking back? And not only that, right? And when you genuinely feel that way, nigga, I be walking around in the gym now and I be walking around everywhere now. And I be like, bro, if a bitch walk by me and she don't see how valuable I could possibly could, if you don't even see, if you're not even interested enough to even give a choosing signal and, and let me know physically, spiritually, that you're not interested, bitch, you're too fucking slow for me, motherfucking anyways. Because how do you not look at me and be like, oh, that's a disciplined man. 6'2", handsome, in shape, focused. He's here every morning at the gym at 5 a.m. How do you? How does that already not look as valuable for I, you? To, you I know what I'm trying it, to say? I say it all the time. So it's, you, let me, uh, I don't mean to cut you off. I'm just going to finish off with this. But it's just like, if you are too, if you can't even see that, you are already too retarded. You know what I'm saying? And it just shows me how fucking stupid you are. How how much that you're you're not even you don't even have the the discernment to be able to understand what is standing right in front of you. You know what I'm trying to say? So, anyways, you know, you know I say it all the time, man. If the broad don't recognize what she's looking at, she's too slow for me anyway. Yeah. But you know, it's it's a little deeper than that. And I make it real, like I say, you know, get your toes with your mouth closed. I make it real hard for a broad not to see. Mm -hmm. You know, because at the same yeah. time, you know. <laughs> Like dudes say in the game, they be like, oh, this dumb bra. You know, it's a saying in the game, a bra to pay a, a stop sign, which means like bras will just pay any random loser just because, you know, and they get mad at it. But I say like this, man, how do you expect somebody with no game to recognize game? You know what I'm saying? Like she has no game. So you mad that she's paying somebody who has no game. She has no game. So if you have no game, how could you recognize game? 
right? So you can't be too mad at the broad. Sometimes you have to put it in her face so it's so obvious because once you get the broad, you have to teach her what value is sometimes. You have to teach her that a disciplined man with intellect in these things is valuable because she might have came up in a space where she doesn't even understand that's valuable. Yeah. Now, it ain't your job to teach abroad, but at the same time, sometimes you got to keep an open mind, and that's why I use the tools because the most yeah. valuable thing about myself is my mind and my wisdom and my yeah. discipline and my intellect. But every woman can't, one, can't see that value by just looking at me. Yeah. Two, doesn't even value those things even if she did see them. Mm -hmm. But guess what? They all value the design of the, these physical things that they've been yeah. programmed the to chain, see. Yeah. So these are called tools in the game. So I got the Rolls Royce. I got the jewelry. I wear the designer. That's going to pique the interest of the masses. Then once she gets with me because I got her interest in her ear, now she could hear my wisdom. She could hear my intellect. And if she likes me enough, I can teach her that these things are actually valuable. Mm, you get what I'm right. saying? Right, not for sure. Definitely. It's like uh, you're using it as bait, but then when you catch it, you actually tell her what the fuck is real. And then, and then, okay, so let me ask you this. That's a good fucking point. So when you get the bitch in there, right? Like, let's yeah. say, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, you pique the interest of the masses. You get her in. Once you get the bitch, then you tell her, you explain her, you teach her what's really valuable, yeah. right? What happens? I mean, I already know the answer to this. I, already, I feel like you're already going to tell me, but let's say you get her in and then you start explaining her to nah, nah, bitch. I know you saw the watch. I know you saw the chain. I know you saw the core. But that's not what's really valuable in this household. And she start trying to, uh, you know what I'm saying? Well, you know, that's not even how the conversation go. I don't speak about these things at all, you know? Right. So I don't say, oh, I know. But yeah, I was just trying to say, like, when you start explaining to her what's really valuable yeah. and she starts trying to, like, uh, be like, like if she starts showing signs that she doesn't value those things, what is just throw that bitch back to the water or? Yeah, well, it's not even, it, of course, you know, mm -hmm. if she don't get on my program, of course she's going to be gone, exactly, but that's not right. even how it goes. It's, okay. not, it's not a one situation where I sit down and I say, hey, this is valuable, yeah, this is right, valuable, right, this is okay. valuable. You show her these things are valuable by how you're living in front of her. Okay. Right? She sees me living with integrity. She sees me reading. She sees me giving her books. She sees everything that I'm about encompassing and it has nothing to do with the material things. So in me living in front of her, she comes to her own conclusion of these things being valuable. You understand? So it's like this, right? You get with a woman. Most of the time, a woman's been with a sucker, been with a liar, been with a fake dude who didn't said anything to get with her, right? So when she gets with most dudes, what is she going to do? She's going to treat us based on her experience with most dudes, which is a bunch of frauds. So mm -hmm. she's not going to treat us all the way right. She's not going to be completely receptive. She's been done wrong. She's not going to be completely trusting with you. Right. So you have to understand that, because if I dealt with nothing but bad experiences, then I'm going to think that's all there is. But what you have to do is understand. Now, not all dudes going to do this. But if you have somebody worth it, sometimes you understand you might have to take a little abuse for two three months and in those two three months once she sees you living in front of her as a righteous man she will start to see damn this dude is like this he has integrity he holds his word he's not like these other dudes and three months later boom a light bulb goes off in her head damn this is a motherfucking man then the appreciation comes in then the receptiveness comes in now she's more open now she's more trusting because you had to show her something different you can't just tell her something different because every dude has told her he was 100 and most of the time they've never been 100 right. you see what i'm saying so sometimes you have to show a woman by living in front of her and understand the fact that she done been with so many frauds she scarred right. and you can't just tell her you a real dude you have to show her exactly no i i 100 agree with that no, not but i want to i want to actually break that part that you said you got to take abuse for a couple months what you mean by that I'm not, listen, I'm saying not. Because if a bitch disrespect me, go there, I don't know if I can deal with no, it, bro. No, 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 you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't think I can deal I'll with that, brother. that. But everybody's okay. not at our point, though. You know, different phases in my life, I would chase a woman. Different phases in my life, I would allow certain things. I'm at a point now where the things that I'm doing, where a woman got to come damn near ready made. Right. But everybody's not at our status, at our point. Mm -hmm. So, I'm saying to certain individuals, they got to understand that. When you're on the come oh, up, yeah, when, when, yeah. when you're okay. on your come up, it's different things that you're going to accept than okay. when you actually done made it. It's yeah. certain things you're going to sure. accept. Yeah. So some dudes have to just, and I ain't saying, man, let the bra be disrespectful. Yeah, That's yeah. not what I mean. Right. What, I, what I'm saying is understand her point of view, where right. she's coming from, right. how most of these dudes are. And if she's had nothing but poor experience with dudes who've been lying, all of these dudes is lying to get in her pants. All of these dudes was faking the front to get with her and change. So she's coming in sour. Like, man, every dude I've ever been with been a fraud. So you have to take that into consideration and understand, listen, I'm going to show her by living in front of her as this 100% man example. And eventually over time, she's going to get appreciation, right? You're not just asking abroad off the jump. Trust me. 
You know, trust me, listen to me. No, 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 let me prove to you why you should. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna prove to you just by living and being a man I told you that I was when we met. Okay. That's what I'm saying. For I'm sure. not saying a dude should take abuse like literally, but what I'm saying is sometimes give a broad leeway. Like I said, you know, and a lot of dudes get this shit confused, right? My mm -hmm. uncle sat me down and he said, man, if a broad is 75% right, that's a good broad. Okay. Now, dudes get that shit confused. They be like, oh, well, that's, that's not that much. And this, that, and the third. Mind you, my uncle was a Mm -hmm. So when he talking about a broad is 75% right, yeah, that's a, yeah, 75% right for a broad who's bringing you money every day. Right. That's a big difference. Right. If the broad ain't bringing you nothing, that bitch got to be damn near 95%. That's what, right. okay, right, you know right, what okay, okay, so, okay. So I want to okay. clarify that. Yeah, yeah, you got Because yeah, <laughs> <it's, laughs> it, it, even when I heard you say that, I'm like, ah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's different. Because yeah, yeah, in the game, yeah. it's the same, man. Yeah, yeah, you get yeah. paid to put up with bullshit. Right, right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. so if a woman is bringing you money every single day, then she, you could cut her some slack. Yeah, you could yeah. cut her some leeway. But most of these dudes, that broad ain't doing nothing for you. So she better be all the way in pocket because I'm getting nothing else out of the situation. Exactly. Right, 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 right. Okay, so let me ask you this. What would go to, you know how you just explained right now, when you coming up, right, and you're not in the position that we're in right now. You yeah. got to be more mindful. You got to be more uh, understanding, right? And I mean, see from her perspective, right? You don't, don't right? got to be. I'm just, giving, I'm just giving, you know, two different ways to look at it. It might be a dude right now who's dealing with some shit with a broad and he don't really understand, you know, like, oh, man, I'm going to just fire her. You know, but if I was in a position where, you know, I wasn't where I was yet and I saw some potential, I might take this route of saying, instead of just firing her, let me give it a little time and see if she don't turn around once she sees me living in front of her. Okay. And number two is, man, you got to be a solid man. And most of these dudes, let's be real, they're not. They're, they're not. doing exactly what the fuck we're talking about. You, you was lying <laughs> to get her. You was faking who you was. You're not disciplined. And guess yeah. what? When she gets with you, she's going to have even less respect because she's going to see you're nothing like you said you were. Mm -hmm. You have all these deficiencies. Mm. You Busted. know what I'm saying? So yeah. really, it's just about, man, if you can really just show that woman, be have integrity, be a real man, say what you mean and mean what you stay. Say, don't stoop to her level when she gets emotional. Don't get like, you know, uh, some dudes, they'll be like, oh, well, she did this, so I'm going to do this. Well, now you just lowered yourself exactly. to, the, to the woman's now level. Like hey, man, you know, when a woman get out of line and get out of pocket, I'm going to still be me. Yeah. And you know what that does? That keeps that broad as small as my pinky nail. Mm. Because when she comes to her senses the next day, she realizes, damn, I acted a fool. Yep. And he was just a righteous man and stayed solid. But if you... If you took yourself down to her level and did all the same shit and went back and forth and, and, and she got fouled and you got fouled, guess what? Now she's not going to feel bad later because you stooped to her level. Exactly. Now, if you're a man, you don't do what the woman do. I'm going to be a man regardless. She could be fouled. She could call my mama this and that and the third. I'm not going to stoop down to that level because that's not me. Mm -hmm. And when she sees that, it's another level of respect. You're not her equal. You're not her friend. You're her man. Exactly. Damn, he's doing something different than me. Right. If you're reacting to every situation the same, same way the woman <laughs> reacts to the situation, why is she going to follow you or, or, or be behind you? You. Exactly. you get what I'm saying? But yeah. these dudes, I don't know if they don't know, if they haven't seen it, or they just haven't took the time to think. I want this woman to treat me a certain way. I want this woman to respect me. I want her to follow me. What type of man would I have to be for her to feel like that? The same way with a man. What type of man am I going to follow? What type of person will I feel safe enough with and respect enough that I'm going to be able to put my life kind of in their hands by following them? That person has to be above me. They can't be doing the same things I, I'm doing. Otherwise, I would just follow myself. Mm -hmm. So you have to be head and shoulders above that bra. You need to be waking up before her. Yeah. You need to be do the things that she's not doing, you doing. You read and she not. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? You have to be doing things to where she can say he's better than me in all these areas. Yeah. A woman don't want to follow somebody who just like her. Of course. What, is, what does Goldie at this point do? If a bitch not coming correct. Straight out the gate. What does Goldie at this point do? Well, I'm going to tell you like this, too. Most women ain't going to come correct out the gate because it ain't too many people like me. It ain't too many people who come from the lifestyle I come from to even require that. So for me to even expect a woman, my uncle told me one time, he told me not too long ago, he was like, man, it's, it's unfair for you to expect her to be you. She said, even some dudes, it's unfair for you to even expect him to be you. Okay, ela he, elaborate on that for me. He was just pretty much saying... You're expecting that man to be you. You're expecting that woman to be you. They haven't been where you've been. They haven't done what you've done. They haven't read what you've read. They haven't had the mentors you, you've had. So you're holding them to your standard. And don't you think that's unfair when you know that there's no way they could be you? Right? So it gives me, gives me to give them a little leeway. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying a bra can be disrespectful. And then it depends how I feel. Some days it's like, bitch, get the fuck out of here. I ain't got time for it. And some days I may be a little bit more patient. And then it depends on a woman. What type of potential do I see, see in her? 
how 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 beautiful is she, is she to me? Does she have some status where I feel like I might be able to, you know, uh, pull myself up based on, you know, so it's a lot of factors involved. Mm -hmm. Bro, I can't never come too disrespectful because that's just too hard to undo. I'd rather a woman already come somewhat correct, but I'm not expecting her to be perfect. Why, how could she ever be perfect for me if she ain't never been with me? Ain't no other dude out here like that. So you're expecting a woman to come ready-made. Man, a woman ain't never gonna come ready-made. A yeah. woman is gonna be made by you. <clears throat> so when she gets with me, if she's receptive enough, I can change those characteristics. I could tell her to stop doing this. Hey, I don't like this. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And then I can tailor make her for me yeah. rather than expecting her to know everything off the dribble, man. If she knew everything off the dribble, I'll be like, man, where's that nigga she was with that, <laughs> that got her like that? You yeah, know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's, it's just not going to happen. Right, right. Now, of course, it's certain red flag, like too much disrespect, too much, uh, you know, uncooperation, yeah. you know, certain things like that. Of course, that's a no go. Be but I mean, that's a no go because she don't like you enough because any woman, <laughs> yeah. any woman who coming like that, she don't like you enough. I was saying that the other day, man, I'm gonna put a test on a woman. As soon as she get with me, you know, it's certain things. I'm gonna tell her, hey, do this for me. Uh, uh, stop, mm. it. stop doing that. Mm. And I'm just doing that. That's a test to see what's her response. How yeah. quickly do she jump to it? Right. Do she got a face about yeah, exactly. it? Exactly. You know, if I tell her, hey, knock that off. I don't like you doing that. I don't like you saying that. Be, relax. Do she got a face about it or is she like, cool, those are tests. And if she passes those tests, I know, okay, now she, we likes go to the, she likes me enough. She's cooperative enough. Okay, now we can move this thing forward. Mm, right, okay. So then let's say she, I, what? what? What is she doing one of those? You say get a, get, get a catch an attitude with this, this that our right, bitch get out. Is it is it one of those or is it like you you finish the date and then you never talk to the bitch again? Like how yeah, the, how it, how that go? It depends on the phase in my life. Cause I, I be feeling like right now, Goldie, if a bitch don't if she come in and I say and I give her one of these tests, yeah, like hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey, don't do this. Hey, do this for me. Do this, and she get a little attitude. I'll be like, look, I'm not gonna be rude and be like, bitch, get the fuck up out of here. Yeah. But I'm gonna be like, hey, listen, you know what? I think. Uh, I'm about to go to bed early. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. come up with some type nah, of excuse. Nah, nah, I feel you that. See, you hey, man, back in the day, man, I used to be a cold young nigga, man. Yeah, I used to put bitches out in the mud. We on skirt. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't do that now because you know, I just you know, I've matured a little bit. Yeah, but it's like this, right? I'm a, I'm gonna read the situation because sometimes you get a little bit too cutthroat and, and try to send a bitch out the door right away. You know, she gonna have too much bad taste in her mouth and she might wanna go and spread some lies or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm always gonna try to end things amicably, right? Cause it's just, it's, it's better to do it that way. But sometimes it's like, man, I ain't got time to be nice. I know this is going nowhere. I don't wanna waste the rest of my night. That's what I'm saying. My yeah. time's too valuable, yeah. I'm gone. That's what I'm saying, yeah. right, okay. Yeah, because, you know, sometimes these bitches be trying to act like you're doing too damn much. And I really don't give a fuck, but I kind of just wanted to pick your brain on what you would do. Because at this point, bro, I'm so focused on my purpose and so focused on But you got to be cutthroat about it. And I'll be honest, sometimes I wish I was more cutthroat like I used to be. Because, man, when I was more cutthroat, I got a lot more respect for me. Hey, I used yeah. to, man, I used to be cut the <laughs> fuck throat. Anything. And I like being that shit. way. And I cutting like shit. being that way, bro. You know. And you know what? You would you touched on this the other day. You was like, bro, I'm more cutthroat in real life on purpose because I know that if a yeah. bitch can pass that test, then she's really for me. Yeah, you, know, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like uh, you know, when they say people who are hard on the exterior, they're really soft on the inside. And I feel like that's why I'm so hard on the exterior. Because so, I'm such a really nice guy. Me too. Real. Yeah. You know Y'all wouldn't sure. think so. I feel that. I'm such a, I feel listen, that. That's, listen, that's, that's how. Listen, for that's real, how like, it is, like, nigga. I'm such a, I'm oh such God, a nice, that's how it is. Loving individual, and yeah. when I have a broad that I. I trust and I really fuck with I do so much yep. you know and I do so much for people around me I have to be so hard on the exterior so so nobody gets too close that don't deserve it. exactly you know what I'm saying exactly so yeah. it's really just a defense mechanism but yeah man I be cutting motherfucking heads but you know it's only to make sure and weed out the women who ain't supposed to be here for sure because if she could pass that test and she you know she really fucking with exactly me. exactly yeah for sure yeah me bro uh like I said at, at this point I'm not I don't like for example bro this one bitch uh, she hit me up the other night, and it's like you ever ha you ever have a situation where a girl from the past she knew a certain version of you, and then you grow, yeah, and you're a totally time. different person two time. months later, and time. she and she come back and she's trying to talk to the old version of you still, mm -hmm. and that new version of you got a, a a whole new set of habits, a whole new set of 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 of, of a, a whole new program that you abide by and enforce, and you're not. You know, like, for example, right, with this situation, this bitch, she talking to me like four or five months ago, right? Back then, I was smoking, drinking, partying, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Was, you know, just indulging in stupid ass habits, you know what I'm saying? Beating off, just doing stupid shit, right? Now, all that shit is gone. 
I don't I don't engage in any of those activities now. I'm waking up at five every morning, going to sleep at eight thirty nine every single night. You saying I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't party, I don't I'm I'm not doing none of that shit, right? And it's like she's trying. You can tell, like, obviously those things, when you indulge in those things, it's like a fucking uh, domino effect, yeah. right? Yeah. Of how you act, like the stupid mistakes you make, all these things, right? And because of those stupid mistakes, bitches are more, you're more easily able to get manipulated by women, right? For sure. So, you know, she's like trying to like pull all these damn like tricks that she was doing before that I would allow in the past. And I'm like, listen to me, bro. If you coming over, like, if you're not, if you're not going to help me make more money, if you're not going to help me on what I got going right now, this is what I got going. If you're not going to help with that, then I really don't want nothing to do with you. you and I told her, her that. Did you tell her what you wanted her to do to help you make more money? Yeah, well, she said, what, it, what are you talking about? Because I said, look, I need a girl that's going to get on program. That's what I said, Goldie. Did you tell her your program was? And she, she, was like, she was like, what's the program? I said, look, if you're going to come over here, one, you can't be combative and two you got to help me with my youtube videos you got to help me make some money you got to help me promote my my products yeah. you know what i'm saying you got to help me do this um okay I'll, I'll come over later that day she never came over right so then it's like i could tell she was waiting for me to try and chase her because that's what the old nigga would do you know what i'm saying so i didn't respond okay whatever or i didn't i didn't you know what i'm saying try and hit her up and see what the deal was she gonna hit me up again the other day you know what i'm saying uh Calling me, talking about, oh, yeah, hey, are you still mad at me? I said, bitch, I was never mad at you. I already told you what the program was. You didn't hit me up, so that's what it was. So then she was like, okay, but, and this is what I'm trying to say. When girls know you are sticking to the program, you putting your foot down, you don't care if they're there or not, they start trying to do, any, they're not used to that. They're not used to a nigga that does not give a fuck if they're there or not. So they start trying to put themselves in a position where they have some type of power. This bitch said, this bitch said, well, I, <laughs> this is gonna be funny but she was like well i don't like uh she was like, well, just to, she was like okay because i told her i was like you know uh, uh this was my response i said i already told you what you needed to do and she was like okay but i don't just want to let you know what i don't like when i get to come when i come over and i don't get to finish I said, bitch, I don't, what the fuck? I said, so I don't like, care. I, I was like, what I don't, mean? meaning like, I don't make her nut. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bitch, I don't give a fuck. I'm, in my mind, I'm like this, man. I don't even give a fuck about that right now. I don't even give a fuck about fucking. I told you this is what I need you to come over here for. Yeah. This is what I got going. This is my program. I'm not even worried about sex. You bringing up some shit that I didn't even fucking care about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my point is like this, too. If you're not fucking with a nigga, if you're fucking with a nigga who is abstinent, not knocking bitches, not beating off, not watching porn. Bitch, you gotta be some you gotta be a girl worthy enough for me to be knocking down so often to the point where I'm really actually caring about trying to please you. Yeah. But I don't care about you because you are useless. You're not helping me at all. You're not making my life better. You're not making me more money. You're not helping me out with my purpose. You're being combative. You know what I'm saying? Like you're just you're wasting my time. And matter of fact, I want to keep my neck. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to bust a nut because I need my life force. Yeah. I need my energy. I but need you know, that shit. You know so, what I'm saying? So, so, so when she came through, you had sex. She with her. didn't come through. No, I'm saying before that, you you had sex with her. You just didn't nut. No, I nutted. She didn't. Okay, see, see yeah. Let me tell you where you were wrong. Though, okay, if I may, you know. Yeah, go ahead. Tell me. Yeah, yeah. I'm always look. I'm always uh. Well, you can't give the bitch no dick. Let me say that again. You can't give the broad no no. You can't give the broad sex. And then ask her for requirements. She has to fulfill the requirements before you give her a award. You working backwards, my okay, brother. Okay. Okay. You, you, okay. You're, you're giving a reward. Okay. So what's the point for me to do all this? Right. You ask the woman for requirements, mm. and I need all of that. What I need of requirements before you can even get a reward. Otherwise, what's the reward? Mm. You know, already gave her the reward before mm. she did what she was supposed to do. Right. Because she was talking. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ain't ahead. getting no sex from me yeah. until some requirements are met. Mm. This is what she really wants from mm. a man. So if you want what you want, baby, I need what I want first. Mm. And if we can't get to what I want, then you don't get what you want. Mm. You know, it's a reward and punishment mm. system. And if you don't have it, man, and a lot of these dudes is backwards because the bra to talk to him crazy the broad will do this do that do something he didn't like and he's still gonna hit it that night you're training her to say it don't matter what you do you still get rewarded man the broad is okay mm. and, I, and, I, and i'm gonna get this to you just like in the game the broad can't have sex with unless she comes with a fee yeah. and even then it's not you're not paying for sex you're paying to come in this household and you still have to have the correct behavior before you get any sex because you have to understand what most dudes don't understand that these women have played this female con on us long enough to act like they don't like sex but most of these women are more sexual and more uh, uh 
nymphotic, uh, she's more of a nympho than most dudes. Yeah. But dudes don't know that. And because dudes don't know that, they get a dick away like it's not, not understanding that the woman wants that dick bad. Yeah. She just knows how to play you out of it. So when you understand your value and the value of your sex, you understand that's a reward and punishment system. Yeah. And you can't give that up before what you want you get from her. And I love that you man, told you, me that. You, you, yeah, you, you fucked up. Yeah. You fucked up, No, man. I did. Hey, but it, hey, you know, hey, I, I can admit it. I did. But see, look, that's why I said she was talking to the old version of me. You know what I'm saying? She was trying to talk to the old version of me. That was me from four or five months ago. And like you said, I fucked up already. It was too late. Oh, okay. I can't. So that was four or five months ago. No, this had that that whole situation I just named of her trying to like, yeah. and then I was laying down like, look, you can't, I, this is the program. That was recently. But she's thinking that she's talking to the McQueen from four or five months ago that would allow this bullshit that she's trying to pull right now. Yeah. Does that make sense? So you're, what you're saying is correct. I couldn't. I I shouldn't have gave her dick, but I Hell didn't realize no. my value back then. You know what I'm saying? So it's like now I'm really enforcing the new program. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So you know, but I'm glad you told me this now because going forward for sure, nigga, the bitch. Yeah, you gotta. You gonna. It's gonna be a charging. It's gonna. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna have to charge. Now, now you know it's saying? different schools of game and different schools of thought, even in the game on that. But the the consensus, not just in the game, but what I always, you know, you can do whatever you want. And I'm not saying it can't work like that, man. You can put it down real good from the jump and a bitch still fuck with you and get on your program. It's not no one way to do things. But when you do it like that, most of the time you can cut out most of the bullshit. For sure. Because if she's willing to do requirements for you before you give her any sex, then you know, one, she likes you enough. And two, you're not giving up because a lot of times a bitch just want to fuck. A lot of times a bitch just want that dick and that's it. But if you make her do a bunch of requirements before she get the dick, one, she covets the dick more. And two, she might stick around longer because by all of those requirements made her put an investment. Yeah. And when a woman puts an investment, she doesn't just walk away. Exactly. Easy. But if she gets the dick too soon, she didn't have any requirements. She didn't make any investments. So it's easy to walk away because there's nothing invested. Exactly. The stick is in his bag, bro. This stick <laughs> is in his fucking bag. No, it's true. It's true, bro. You speak in the motherfucking choir. And you know what I'm saying? I'm glad that you motherfucking told me that because, nigga, like I said, you know, I'm enforcing a new program very strict. I run a strict program, Goldie. You know what I'm saying? I run a strict program and I need things in place. I need the system. I need the tools yeah, but, in but place. You know, well, I keep on messing up the timeline, but I was just saying, but you, you're saying that that wasn't this time. You, so you had sex with her this time? No. You didn't? Okay. So I haven't had sex with her like over six months. Okay. Yeah. Man, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So she, what I'm trying to say is, she, yeah, you, man, you follow I, me hey, now? Let me tell you this. Let okay. me tell you this, man. It's, it's, it's like this. If I go to a store or on the corner, you know, and every day on the corner, it's like a, a bag of popcorn or a bag of oranges. And they're like, we give them out for free every single day. And then one day they say, oh, it's $10. Most people is going to be like, nigga, I ain't getting that shit. That shit used to be free. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to keep on walking down the street. Yeah. That's how it is. You gave the dick up yeah. for free, so I ain't finna pay for it. And this nigga wants some requirements. Now I've been getting that shit for free for the past so, so, and so. Why the fuck I'm going to pay for it now? So that's why you got to put the price on it first. That's what they even say in business, man. You start high. You don't start low because when you raise your prices, they don't like it. You got to start high. It's just with you. For you to fuck with me, it's requirements. If you let the bra get too much access to you for nothing, when you raise the price, you're going to look at you stupid. Like, yeah. what? Nigga, you just, yeah. I was able to come through whenever I wanted to. Now you want to act like, I'm cool. Yeah. So that's why you got to start with these requirements from the gate. So she knows that's, all, that's how it's always been. Yeah. It's like a dude's want to start getting... Dudes be coming to me, man, don't ask me about trying to get no money out of no bra. But these dudes, they be trying to ask me, oh, how do I get some money out this bra? I say, you're not going to do it. Because when you started dealing with her, you didn't say that was a requirement. You're not finna deal with her in a certain way and never be talking about that. Then all of a sudden be like, all right, bitch, break yourself. Right. No, don't work like that. Yeah. She gonna look at you like you stupid, like right. a fucking fraud, like she should. If you wasn't off the dribble telling her, hey, baby, I'm about my money. Let's get this money together. Let's hustle together. You know what I'm saying I do this love shit, but I don't do this broken love shit. If you wasn't on that from the gate, She's not going to respect it when you try to all of a sudden jump on top of trying to get some money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you got to start how you finish and start with them expectations yeah. off the jump. The first thing when she, well, like you said, you, you're a different person now. But the first thing a woman should be talking about when she first get with you, you should be talking about, hey, listen, I need you to film my content. Yeah. I need you to do this for me. Hey, help me promote my shit. You got a good following. You going to help me uh, repost my shit? Yeah, or let's that's, use them looks to motherfucking promote my product. You exactly. know something. So that, yeah. should be, that should be the conversation from off the dribble. For sure. For sure. For sure. And I know that now. Yeah. But like I said, that bitch was trying to talk to the old McQueen, Goldie. Yeah. You know? Yeah, let's see. Let's see if I got some questions in here. What are some tests you can give to a broad to see if she really down for you? Very simple. And even though it's simple, most of you dudes aren't going to do it because you know she's not really down for you like that. Tell your woman, call her up in a serious voice and say, listen, 
I can't tell you the details out of safety for yourself, but I need this amount of money. Make sure the amount of money is not something too easy for her to give you, but not something too much that she can't get you. Something that's like a two week check for her. Say, I need this amount of money. I wouldn't ask you for it if I could get it anywhere else. You are my last resort and it's very serious. You know, I've never came to you like this. Can you give it to me? If she gives it to you, she's fucking with you. She's down for you. If she don't give it to you, if she's asking a whole bunch of questions, if she finds some excuse not to give it to you, she don't fuck with you. And it's really that simple. There's, mm -hmm. there's no way you can dispute it for me. Because if you really love somebody, if you was really down for somebody, whether it's a, a, a woman, whether it's your mother, father, brother, sister, cousin, best friend, and they came to you like that and you really fuck with them, guess what? You'd have made it happen for them, right? So it's just proof that if she doesn't come up with it, she doesn't really fuck with you. And yep. it's really that simple. Yep. But most of y'all aren't going to do that test because you know deep down inside she don't really fuck with you like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to feel like, oh, and that's, and you know what? That's going to teach a lot about how, about, about what these niggas actually value too. Because the only reason they're not going to say this is because like, like, you, like you said, they know the bitch is they not going to give it to them. And then they know they're about to lose pussy too. Yeah, yeah I mean. It, you know what I'm saying? It's like you niggas is, <laughs> you don't try to say, niggas is valuing the pussy too much, too motherfucking much. And you know what? That brings up a more, another topic. You yeah. talk about this this topic a lot, right? Yeah. Man, you must not put pussy as the number one thing on the totem pole of importance when it comes to these bitches. Let you me say. Let me tell you why. It's the same way. It's it's all about leverage. Never let a woman get leverage on you for for damn sure. But never give anyone leverage on you. But when you give a woman leverage, it's like giving a woman a baby. You don't know who somebody is until they have leverage on you. You could be with a woman two, three, four, five years, and a lot of dudes experience this. Then she gets pregnant, she acts like a completely different person to you. Why? Because she has leverage on you. Or, you know, broad hit the lotto on you. Or broad get a big check on you. You know, now she has leverage. Or sometimes dudes go to jail, not a woman talking to him crazy like she never. Now, because she's in a higher position, she has leverage on you. You get what I'm saying? So when you value the pussy like that and make it this important, she has leverage on you because she has something that you want and can't get without her. So when you take the pussy off the pedestal, mm -hmm. say that's not legal tender in this relationship. Matter of fact, I don't even want that. Exactly. Guess what? Now she has no leverage and she has to come correct. She has to come with some real value to you. So it's imperative that you don't give her any value by letting her know that the pussy is this valuable to you. Right. You have to act like you don't want it or really just understand like how valuable is it really in the scheme of life? Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I feel like the only way to really under to really get to the second part you said right there, like understanding how it's really not that valuable is to yeah. do the inner work that most of these niggas is not going to do. Nah, they not you know gonna what I'm saying? You're not going to you, you're not going to sit there and, de and devote your life to installing certain habits that are going to allow you to not look at a woman a certain way or strip a bitch down from her titties, from her ass, all this and install these and, and change the algorithm in your mind. You're not going to, you know, what I'm saying do you know what I'm saying? Me, I go to therapy, you know what I'm saying? To get the help to actually make my, you know what I'm saying? To make myself a, a better person. You feel I, me? Most niggas ain't going to do that. I feel like so. this shit right here is therapy. Oh. Sometimes you just have to hear an idea. A lot of these dudes have never heard this information yeah. before. Yeah. So just the fact that you heard it, you can't unhear it. Yeah. So just by hearing it, some dudes might say, you know what? That does make sense. P pussy is not that valuable. Yeah. So it might be able to change their paradigm just by hearing this information. Yeah. But uh, another thing is because, you know, women use sex in a relationship uh, so much because you value it too much. It's like you go to a store. It's like uh, my mom would tell me, she was like, all right, you finna go to that dealership and uh, buy that car? Like, we'll be there. And I'm like, oh, that shit is nice. She'll nudge me like, hey, come here, son. Mm. Stop acting like you like that motherfucking car so much. He gonna play on you harder if he know you really like it. You gotta act like you really, you ready to walk out of here with nothing. You gotta act like you don't really care for that car that much. That's the only, people will play on you for something you really want. That's why you can't act like you really want the pussy. You know what I'm saying? So, this nigga's in his <laughs> fucking bag. Oh you know? my God. So, but, but okay. what I'm saying is, like yeah. just in a relationship period, that's why you can extract no value from this woman because she thinks that her pussy is valuable and it is because you value it. Because right. everything, nothing happens has intrinsic value yeah. if that was the case everybody would value everything the same we place value and on you, things whether it's a car what whether it's this, value whatever on. you have everybody values things differently right yeah. but because you've told her and acted like and compromised on your morals your integrity and this for the pussy she sees how valuable it mm. is so therefore when you do something for i say it all the time take her on a trip do this do that take her out to dinner, do something for her birthday. In return, she gives you pussy because you've told her it's this valuable. She thinks so, the pussy's a sufficient so payment. So the only way 
the only way that you can get reciprocal value from a woman, the only way you can get her to start coming with true value for you is to take the pussy off the pedestal, say, that's not legal tender in this relationship. Mm. You can't pay me with that. Mm. And once you do that, what's she going to bring value from? Now she has to bring true value, right. just like you bring true value in the situation. So... Like I but, said. but these niggas can't do that. You have to do that from the get go, right? You have to do that from the get go. Cause I mean, you can't be knocking the bitch, right? You, you, and then you, mid like two months into the relationship, like nah, you, bitch, this pussy, you, this shit ain't valuable to you, me no more. You can, but most dudes aren't gonna do it. It's better to start how you finish. But I mean, if you all of a sudden switch it up and really stand on it like that, you can. It's just gonna take a lot more time. But you you want to come? But I, I'm just saying that to say you is like dudes got to do the inner work. I encourage dudes to do the inner work. Fuck the bitch, man. Like. Don't do the inner work for the bra. Of course not. I'm not doing. Of course nothing not. For yeah. The no, no, no. Ain't nothing of course in not. Life and yeah. <laughs> important no. enough for me to be doing it for the. Bro. You doing do it for you. Doing the inner yeah. work will change your entire life, your entire being, way surpass the bra. For sure. But what I'm saying is, I don't feel like a dude necessarily has to do the inner work to take the pussy off the pedestal okay. if he just understands that him putting the pussy on the pedestal is counter counterproductive to everything that he wants and is shooting himself in the foot. And if he values this pussy, he's never going to get true value out this woman. If he values this pussy, the woman's going to be able to pull him by his nose this way and that way. So I feel like even if he doesn't do the true work, if he understands this message that we're talking about and really digests it, He'll say, you know what, even though I really want the pussy, I understand how it's really fucking my life off by valuing it so much, or at least letting her know I value it so much. And they might be able to still, you know, switch around their mindset, okay. even, even if they fake it. Doing the inner work makes it real, so it makes it everlasting, because I really, truly feel like that. That's but, what, I'm, but, that's but, what but, I was just about to say. But niggas can still fake it, man. Shit, you... Bros ain't that sharp. You could just fake acting like you don't want the pussy and yeah, still have I'm the same I'm speaking effect. from my perspective. I couldn't no, fake no, it. No, no, for sure. I couldn't sure. fake it. So I had to really feel like that. Nah, nah, that. You know what I'm trying to say? You're speaking of you, but yeah. you're, that's good because you're speaking from a perspective that I was never at. So that's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Facts. Yeah, see that that's what I'm saying. I had to I had to go the extra yeah. mile. Nah, nigga. nah, but that's good because it's <laughs> yeah. a lot of dudes who because I, I see it all the time too. You know, a lot of dudes, they like, man, I'm just feeling it. Man, when I was like 16, 17, 18, 19, You was already knocking bitches, yeah. That's all, that's yeah. all I cared about. All yeah. I cared about was getting money and women. Yeah. It was like an addiction. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of dudes, too, at a young age, like, that's why I got to be in my son's life. Because I wish somebody would have came and broke it down to me. Man, you got to talk to your kids about sex like you would talk to them about drugs. Because sex is a drug. It the is same a drug. Me going it's a off. fucking niggas, addiction, niggas do, nigga. Oh niggas do God. things for sex like they would for crack. They will ruin their life. They will do things they're not supposed to. They'll spend all their money. They'll do mm -hmm. things that, that don't even make sense. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's like when my son gets older, I'm going to have the conversation with him when I'm talking about sex. It's not just sex. You don't got to just worry about STDs or mm. getting a broad pregnant. It can mess with your mind. You have to treat it like a drug and understand that it will mm. make it can make you do certain things. So it's like, it's, but if you know that, then you'll start to see yourself when you're doing those things and maybe you can stop yourself. But if nobody ever explains that aspect, like yeah. sex is a drug, man, and you have to be careful what you do and how you move and operate, it'd be different. You know what I'm saying? Because nah, these dudes you move like uh, uh, fiends about this shit. Yeah, you know, sure. ruin their lives, ruin their career, ruin their relationships, you know, behind pussy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's, it's not like you just saying it's a drug. It actually is. No, it's yeah, dopamine, dopamine, nigga. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's and, like, and, and, and then yeah. guess what? drugs in the hand of children because you're a teenager when you start having sex mm -hmm. so that's a huge responsibility to expect a child and to adolescent's have control, mind yeah. to have he's dealing with the same addiction as you know drugs at 16 17 18 yeah. he doesn't know how to operate he's never been in a situation where it's something biological that's forcing him to do something that rationally he knows he shouldn't do yeah. you understand what i'm saying so but if you don't break that down to somebody they're just gonna you know it's like putting a gun in somebody's hand who don't really understand the power of it you yeah. don't really understand yeah. what this is right here right right you right. know let me let me answer this question real quick right you know somebody said because you know i'm big on mentorship like you know, from all the game that i got from uncles from from uh, business people you know i've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on mentorship and i feel like that's why i am where i am you know so i always advocate for that and so so people ask me how do i add value to people higher on a higher level than me right and i'll say it like this most of the time you can't so you know what you need to do monetarily Right. Stop trying to tell this person, hey, I can work for you. Hey, I mean, that might work sometimes. But if people are on such a higher level than you, they would rather pay a professional and get a real job done in a professional way than hire you. Now, some people might just be nice and do it. But if you want to cut through all the bullshit 
you go up to a motherfucker who has hella value and understand you bring nothing to the table. That interaction, like the broad, the only person who's going to win in that situation is you and it's going to take away from their time because there's nothing you can offer. Them. So the only thing that you can offer to somebody on a higher level than you most of the time is money. And yep. you should be straight about it like, yo, I see how much value you got and I'm not even going to disrespect you by asking you questions for free that I know it took you blood, sweat and tears and maybe even money yourself to learn. Hey, I got a band for you. I got two bands for you. What's your mentorship cost? You don't do mentorships, man. I'll just pay for, for some of your time. Right. Don't even do the uh, can I take you out to, to dinner shit, man? A high level motherfucker got shit going on. You yeah. think he want to sit down with you for a meal that he could have bought himself? And he got time. Took, he could have took his broad. He could have took his kids. Exactly. So, I mean, you could do it because a lot of people. They want to do mentorship, so they might see something in you. But if you want to cut through all the noise and guarantee it, show a motherfucker you serious. Yeah. Don't come up to me and be like, let me do this. If you really value what the fuck I could bring to the table, if, if you truly value it, then you'll pay for it. Exactly. Don't tell me you value what I bring to the table, but you don't want to pay for it. You exactly. don't really value it. You're trying to get something for nothing, and I hate a something for nothing ass nigga. Man. Man, don't come try to get something for me for nothing in return. I can't stand them you know, niggas. Yeah. I, when I was younger, man, I would give motherfuckers bread before this was even a thing, because when I was younger, I, my mom had less brown tape. She had certain books around. So I always understood this, this concept of mentorship. So mm. when I was in the streets, mm -hmm. I would give niggas money. Like, yo, I, I, I see you doing this, you doing that. Hey, man, I just wanted to give this to you, man, because I respect what you're doing. And niggas would be like, nigga, what? Come fuck with me. Like, because nobody was doing that type of shit. You want somebody to respect what you're saying, then, then say it with a bankroll. It's like, yeah. uh, like in the game, you'll tell them, hey, bitch, talk with a, a real bitch, talk with a bankroll. Yeah. Don't come around this motherfucker talking about you like me. Uh, you, yo, I'm fine. This, that real bitch, talk with a motherfucking bankroll. And in real life, a serious mm. individual comes mm. with a motherfucking deposit. These niggas out here trying to get something for nothing, and the shit fucking irritates me. Nigga, I'm on this motherfucker every day, spending my time and my life giving you motherfucking tell game. Tell you him. Jump in my motherfucking inbox asking nigga, me for tell Niggas, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I appreciate what you do. Nigga, if you appreciate nigga, I got products on my motherfucking website. Go get you something. Show me how much you, know you appreciate me, yeah, nigga. Yeah, man, I hate that shit, but... But going back to that, man, because I'm not never going to ask a motherfucker for something for free. I understand the blood, sweat, and tears it took me and, and penitentiary chances that it took mm. me to mm. get the game that I got. And mm. nigga, you want it for free? You want it because you said some nice shit to me? You want it for $150 meal? No, give me some money and I'll know you're serious. And the money, it, even you giving a high level individual money, it still don't even matter. Yeah. I would still rather have my time, but at least I know you're serious. And you know what that means? You're going to actually do something with the information exactly. I give you. Exactly. Because if I give it to you for free, you're not going to do it because free yeah. motherfuckers never do it because they don't value the information yeah exactly so if you want to get a high level you want to get around a high level motherfucker stop trying to just get around and think they just gonna think you cool be at that nigga table and be like yo i got the table for the night let me buy a bottle here's here's 300 ones uh, to throw in the strip club that's what you gotta do understand you're not a sucker you understand the value that that person brings and you don't want to be a something for nothing ass person because everybody in life is a something for nothing ass motherfucker yeah. and i'm gonna tell you something high level individuals hate something for nothing ass mm. nigga. and we're not gonna tell you you're something for nothing ass nigga you know what we're gonna do you're gonna try to get something for nothing and we're just gonna categorize you in, my, in our immediately and, and not you're fuck already with, immediately and not fuck with you no right. more exactly right? because Nigga, you're not slick. You think you was gonna come over here and get all if you if you're around somebody and they keep doing something for you, paying for this, paying for that, and you're like, oh, he's not saying nothing. And you think you're getting over, you're not getting over, you're getting over on yourself because that nigga is noticing, taking notes, and noticing what type of character you got, and they're saying, I'm not gonna fuck with you. Exactly. So even if somebody is doing something for you, doing something for you, don't wait for them to ask you, be like, hey, bro, this is what I got on it. Or if you don't got it, be like, I, I ain't got it, so I don't wanna come because I don't wanna keep taking advantage of you. Exactly. Have some motherfucking character yeah, around exactly. this motherfucker. Man. Exactly, right. Right. But yeah. then I went off on a tangent. No, man. I mean, it's me true. Off. Yeah, that no, it's true. Me it's true. You speak in the choir because it's true. Because a lot of niggas, you know, it's honestly disrespectful yeah. that you come up to me and expect this fucking valuable game that I fucking slaved for, nigga, that I fucking worked my entire motherfucking life, nigga. I went through loops, nigga, blood, sweat, and tears, nigga. I had to do things that most niggas was not willing to do. I yeah. had to get in certain rooms. I had to meet certain people. I had to fucking put in this work. I had to spend yeah, I had late mornings, down. nigga, late mornings, early, uh, late, or what's it called? Late nights, early mornings. You know what I'm saying? I had to, you know what I'm saying, put myself in a position. I had to fail and, and, and succeed again and then meet this person because of all this work I put in on YouTube yeah. and, you know, all, all this all shit. All the losses. All the losses, yeah. everything, nigga. Like, all the damn rejections, successes, failures. I had to go through everything to get to and this point and you want to walk up to me when I don't even fucking know you and you want me to give that shit to for you for free and then when I don't give it to you for free 
I'm an asshole. All right, cool. You know, I guess I'm my asshole then. And, and I'm going to say this. You know bro, I give out so much free game. Like, if, if somebody came up to me on the street, I'm going to still give you free game. But what people don't understand is, man, I give up thousands of crumbs of game, but it takes hundreds of thousands of crumbs to make up one slice of the cake of this game. You're really not getting it all. Man, I had a mentor that I was watching online for a long time, and I thought I was soaking so much shit up. I finally, years later, got on his actual mentorship program, and when I got with him, I realized, oh, my God. I didn't even, I wasn't even getting half of it. And that's why the shit was only kind of working. Like there's, there's only so much that you can get online. There's only so much you can get without getting in somebody's face and really getting an eye on your situation. Not to mention, it was a lot of things that he did that he told me, he said, oh yeah, since then I've learned that was wrong. Mm. But I'm taking in this information that's wrong. So yeah. it's like, you really just cheating yourself. But I was gonna say, we should think about this when we deal with broads. A broad is coming into your life and getting you at this status that you sacrifice for, that you blood, sweat, and tears, the information, the status, the, the whatever monetary level that you're at, and she's getting it for what? Nothing most of the time. She has to have requirements, not just because, oh, I'm trying to be hard on abroad. She has to come up with requirements because it required a lot for me to be mm. here. And for me to allow her to get all of this for nothing says a lot about me. It's her trying to get something for nothing. So she, the least she can do is bring requirements to this table that's already been built. Uh, there was something that uh, we talked about in the gym yesterday that I wanted to bring up. Oh, nigga. Um, putting yourself in a position to get chose. A, a real player knows how to put himself into in position oh, yeah, to get man. chose. That was a lesson you know that saying? I learned, you know, back in the day. Uh, a true player, number one, you got You can't overlook that first part because it's it's multiple lessons in that. And the first lesson is a true player gets chose. Mm. A true mm. player don't choose because a true player understand the only woman that's going to be his woman is the one that's going to choose him. Mm. Choosing don't always mean she come up to you and talk to you, but man, some of my most longest lasting relationships was women who came up to and, me. And but if she's not coming up to you, you know, she's giving you those choosing signals. Or like I was telling you the other day, man, I'm not necessarily talking to a hundred bras, but guess what? I'll be like, hey, how you doing? Or give her a smile or finger her over this way. To me, that's putting myself in position to be chose. I presented myself. Now she could let me know if she's fucking with her or not. Mm. She could let me know if she liked me or not. Mm. And it don't take a long time to do it. All these PUA guys got it wrong. Mm. Their success rate and percentage is not no better than anybody who talks to 100 women. Exactly. They don't, what they don't understand what most dudes in the game understand is, man, the broad is only going to fuck with who she like. Exactly. And, and you just may talk to enough women that you found the one that you like, but it's not the same anyway when you're putting so much effort and so much game and so many lines and being this person that you're actually not to catch this woman. You're going to catch her, but you're not going to be able to keep her. Exactly. So all I'm saying is, a true player knows not only how to put himself in position to be discovered, but he knows the right venues for the type of women that he's looking for and for the type of women that like his who he is. Mm. It's certain places that I can go where I know those type of women don't really like me in abundance. Mm. And in certain environments, I know where I'm a motherfucking catch in those mm. environments. Right. And in certain environments where I know it's the type of woman that I like, she frequents these places. All of these factors are in... in, in that you got to take into consideration. I was telling you the other day, sometimes you got to be outside. You got to be posing. That's what it's called, posing to be chosen. Yeah. You got to be posing to be chosen. You just out enjoying yourself. You're not worried about abroad, mm -hmm. but you know you're in position to where your broad is out there. And I say it all the time, man. Everybody is looking for somebody else's woman. My uncle told me, he said, man, stop trying to get everybody else's woman. Get your woman. What I mean by that is this. You want to get the woman that wants you that when you talk to her, she's talking back. When you say hello to her, her eyes is wide. When you make a joke, she's laughing hard. When you tell her stop doing something, she stops doing it. You're looking for your woman. Most people are walking around with somebody else's woman. That's why she talks to you crazy. That's why she don't talk to you right. That's why she don't rub you back when you ask. That's why she's not touchy feely on you. Cause that's not your woman. That's somebody else's woman. She just mm -hmm. happened to get with you cause you chased her down and mm -hmm. made her just be like, ah, oh, all right, fuck it. I'm gonna fuck with exactly. he did. He doing all this shit. I might as well, I'll be stupid not to. I'm only looking for my woman. So I don't care if I talk to 99 women and they all tell me, no, nah, I'm cool. Thank you. I'm not looking for you. I'm looking for my woman and my woman is out there. And whether it take me a one out of 100, one out of 200, man, I'm gonna put the work in to find my one. And, and the more you work on yourself, them numbers are gonna be less. It might be one in 50, one in 30. But at the end of the day, it's never gonna work if you're not looking for your woman. I'm only looking for my woman. And I feel like most of these dudes, stop looking for who you looking for, look for your woman. Mm -hmm. Choose the woman who choose you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So no, it's facts. It's facts, bro. Yeah, I mean, that's really all I got for real. Let me tell you something. Somebody said, how do you punish your woman? The biggest punishment that I can give to one of my women is not me putting my hands on her, because if you put your hands on a woman, you're going to jail. Mm. Let me just tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. The biggest punishment, if my bra get out of pocket, that I could do to her 
it's removing my presence. Mm. You got to get as cold as the icy Himalayas. No texting, no talking. I don't care what she going through. You just get cold on a bra. Mm. See, the biggest thing that I could do that will make a woman cry is say, I ain't fucking with her no more. And if you ain't got your woman to that point, that's not your woman or you've been doing something wrong. If removing your presence from your woman isn't the most excruciating thing to her, then you've already been working backwards and you just need to go get you another bra. Exactly. You know, there's there's nothing else like there's nothing else that I'm gonna do. If my woman does something that I don't like, it's two things. I'm gonna withdraw first. Okay. And second, I'm gonna leave her. Right? Those are the only two options. Yeah. And the reason most women are out of pocket with a man is because there are no consequences, because you're not willing to walk away. And mm. because you're not willing to walk away, there are no consequences. Mm. If there's not a consequence for a child to stop doing something, why would they stop? Why they not willing to walk away, Goldie? Huh? I said, why they not willing to walk away? They're not willing to walk away because these dudes have a dependency on not just women, but things outside themselves to fulfill themselves. Mm. Therefore, they don't like being alone. Mm. They don't like being alone. They mm. don't like not having consistent pussy. These guys are deficient. They're not doing the work like you're doing. Mm. And me, I'm not even going to say I was always doing the work. I just never gave a fuck. But when, when you need something outside yourself, man, you're going to you're gonna take on friends that aren't really your friends. Mm. You're going to be around women that aren't really good for you. You're going to put yourself in a lot of precarious situations that are detrimental to you because you can't just be by yourself. Mm. I'm going to tell you a quick story and I've okay. never I've never thought about this right I could remember when I was in high school maybe ninth grade I used to always go to this cafeteria table with a lot of dudes that I knew right and I can remember one day I was like well it seems like I'm always being the butt of these jokes every time I come over here so I was like you know what I'm not going over to that table no more right and I started walking around the school at lunch by myself and eventually I started having other dudes that I knew come and chill and walk with me right and I think back on that now like I've always had this mindset Nigga don't got to tell me, hey, those aren't really your friends if they're talking about you every day. I was in a position where people were treating me less than I felt like I deserved, and I removed myself. Right. Nobody had to tell me. Nobody had to teach me that. I didn't have to contemplate on it. It was as simple as these niggas keep always making me. So you've always had that. I'm not going to say I always had that, but it, it just, I, just, I just thought about that. Like A lot of people need to be told, hey, man, she's not treating you right. He's not. You need to get it. When somebody doesn't treat me the way I feel like I need to be treated, I'm going to move out the way yeah you know what i'm saying and and most of these dudes a woman's not treating them right you know they're gonna stay in the situation well it's something deficient in yourself that you actually feel like you deserve that treatment because if you didn't deserve <laughs> so, that treatment yeah. you would you would just leave yeah so you got to build up some things in yourself and i like to do it through fitness by holding my word to myself by doing what i'm saying i'm gonna do by being proud of the man that i am when i look in the mirror so mm. i self-validate myself so when you treat yourself like this everybody Why would you else, let anybody else everybody else if anybody comes beneath this it's gonna feel a way to exactly you. you know what i'm saying exactly. so I, it's yeah. like you say it's, it all it all goes back to the to the, the lack of self-respect yeah, yeah the last lack of self-respect it yeah. was funny uh dave Chappelle said it one time i can't remember how it went the joke went he was talking about r kelly you know pissing on somebody and he was like man uh she was 15 and he was like at 15 years old if a motherfucker was pissing on me i would move out the way exactly that right simple. exactly you know what I'm right, right so if a woman is disrespecting me i'm not going to be there if she keeps talking to me crazy i'm not going to be there i don't care five years 10 years 15 years 20 years i don't care what you've done for me bitch every single day you don't get points yes today for yesterday's game every day you got to come in here with respect every day you got to come in with respect every day you got to treat me the way i deserve to be treated otherwise i'm gone exactly. because i love myself that much exactly and i'm always working on myself and, and i you stayed can't... in the gym and i stayed mm. on my motherfucking grind mm. and i stayed getting my money so bitch i'm a motherfucking cat so let me go catch me a new one who won't treat me exactly like and the only way you feel that way and the only reason why you feel that way is because you're actually doing the work you Man, can't fake that type of confidence goldie let, let me let me tell you this though when I was younger, I tell it all the time, man, I had a two-door Mitsubishi, man, with a light I had to hit to come on. You know, I had a room. Most of the time I had my bras. We was in and out of hotel rooms. Man, I still felt like that, man. I still told really? to call me a king. But, yeah. you know, it was delusional. It was definitely delusional. And but did you really feel that way? Or I mean, were you trying to fake it? Or? I, I, you know, I was mimicking. I was still young, so mm -hmm. I was mimicking okay. the actions of all the players. But that nigga game. made it convincing so, enough. So, so, but, yeah. but in my mind, you I really, really believed, believed it, though. Shit. Yeah, and that's all it takes. Because yeah. my, my uncle yeah. would tell me, like, yeah. see, some people in life didn't have this. Yeah, my uncle would tell me, like, nigga, you a king, yeah. you a god. Yeah. When I'm young, so he and was that, programming your and, subconscious for and, real. And yeah, that really stuck with me. Like yeah. he told me that I took it at face value. Like, yeah, you a king, you a god. I don't have nothing. Yeah, but he said you're a king, you're a god. Yeah, man, I started telling him how I was that. Hey, I'm a king. Tell you that as a man, you know, when I had nothing and I really felt like that. But guess what? The only bras that fuck with me, no matter how delusional it was, was the ones who was like, well, that's what he expects. So I'm gonna treat him like that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. Now, of course, do the work. Do the work. Yeah, because I, I didn't have I, that. So I, I had I, to do I the work. I wish I did yeah. the work earlier. Okay. But 
I say you can just manipulate yourself to believe yeah. it. I don't know. But I think it's easier for you in your situation because you had people that you looked up to that had those strong personalities that yeah. tell you that and kind of auto suggest that to yourself or yeah, to you. You, you know what I'm saying? It's definitely what you around you think is normal. When you're, when you're around a dude and you see him with multiple women and they all smiling and they all doing stuff for him and, you know, he don't got a lot. He, so you just think that's normal. You tell another dude that, he think like, that. I could never do that. Yeah, because if you, you told that saying? to fortune on me, I'd be like, damn. But, but, but <laughs> let's take it deeper. That's why masterminds, mentors, the right network, proximity matters so because important. it yeah. makes what you want to have believable. And, I, and there's nothing in life that that you will get that you don't believe you could have. Otherwise, you'll self-sabotage yourself once you get close to it because you don't really believe it. So masterminds, uh, networking, oh. being in the right places, staying in the nice hotels, it makes that shit believable. Once it's believable, you could achieve it. Exactly. Exactly. It's true. It's true. You will never say you will next you will never succeed further than your own beliefs. So, uh, your limiting beliefs. And most you know of us, it's man, true. It's, it's a lot of it's a lot of subconscious limiting beliefs from the news. From that's why we was just talking about indoctrination. Dude, dude talking about you know the motherfucking recession. I don't want to hear that shit. I'm turning all that shit off. Exactly, man. You know, mo most people are scared. Like they say, look, 95 percent of your fears never come true. Most people are scared about a boogeyman that's never gonna happen. They scared of getting robbed. They ain't never been robbed in their life. Nobody ain't knows ever been robbed. Only thing they, that's been robbed is somebody they seen on TV. But they moving around scared like that's gonna happen to them. I'm not saying you shouldn't be aware, but you talking you you if you watching every day about a recession. That's going to be your excuse for shit not going right. Oh, you know, because it's a recession. Yeah. So it's a, nigga, don't talk to me about nigga, my that fucking recession. Ass I made shit, the most nigga. money in my life in right. times where they said oh it's a recession. Oh, my God, nigga. So, so I don't nigga, even want COVID, that type nigga, of shit. I was going crazy, nigga. I don't even want that type of shit to seep into my right. subconscious because then you're going to start believing it. And yeah. then you're going to start moving in ways. And then you're going to start half-stepping subconsciously because you think, oh, well, it's not really out there anyway. Oh, it's hard times anyway. So mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, we going off on a tangent. But I just think mindset and belief is everything. So, of course. You know, being around proximity and things that you like. That's why get on our calls. You know, watch these videos, get in my game calls, get my game guy mentality. Because sometimes just hearing, like when I was coming up, we would fellowship with other older players, with my mentors, with my uncles. I would ride around. Like when you had a mentor in the game, you would get with them. You would ride around. Mm -hmm. You ride around with them all day. Mm -hmm. You're really just soaking up the energy and yeah. knowing how to move and seeing the confidence. It makes it easier for you to ask for big amounts of money when you see him asking for big amounts mm -hmm. of money. You know? Right, I don't yeah. know. It's something. No, it's true. What you're saying is, yeah. is, is pure facts. I understand uh, totally. It's just with me. When I hear you say about this, I'm like, man, I wish I had that shit when I was 14, nigga. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to tell, tell you what one of my mentors said. I had to learn everything by myself, I tell, nigga. I tell, I tell everybody the same shit that one of my mentors told me. And when he started giving me some game, I was like, fuck, I fucked up. Damn, I wish I had this. Damn. And you know what he said? Without, without fail, without letting me go too far. He said, it's okay. Cause you get in now, so just use it now. Yeah, he cut me yeah. off and just said it that yeah. matter of fact. Okay, and, and that was it. I right, it was like so. I just tell everybody the same thing he told me. Yeah, hey man, you get in now, use it now. Exactly right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. What do you think about people who are in relationships? Cause I say a lot of people don't know who they with, because when you got that broad, you was drunk at the club. Every time y'all get together, you you drink and you smoke or you mm. pop pills or whatever you do with that broad. So you don't even really know who that woman is until you're sober and that might not happen for a, a month or two into your relationship and then you realize you don't even know who this person is you don't even like this person this person don't even like like they self a lot of people when they meet they meet in these intoxicated drug fueled uh states of mind so they've never actually met the person that they with actually without any of that what you think about that i think it's very fucking true man. and i'll give you an i'll give you an example why yeah. i think it's true because my longest relationship which was three years and the most toxic one, I used to always think that to myself, like maybe two and a, two and a half years into the relationship, I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, I don't think it's ever the moment I met this bitch, we was loaded. We was drinking. Knocked her the first night, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then two, two and a half years go by, and I'm, you know what I'm saying? At this point, it was like 2021. I mean, no, not 2021, like 2019, 2018. Niggas are still doing drugs and all type of stupid shit. Nigga, we go to the beach later at night just doing drugs, drinking, smoking, whatever, right? And nigga, we had some pure ecstasy ass times. Nigga, no, some yeah, beautiful listen, ass motherfucking listen, listen, times. How could you not have a good time Ex with your own drugs? Exactly, <laughs> right? And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, and you know, I wake up sometimes next to this bitch and we're like, was it just the drugs though? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, I don't really, she kind of pissed me off most of the time. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So I said, and then I remember I saw a lyric or something and it was like, do I really love this bitch or is it just the drugs? And I thought, I'm like, damn, this nigga kind of right. Like, is it just the yeah, drugs? And then, and, and, and most of the other times, whenever we were sober, she was causing problems. She was causing problems. She was the toxic person because her real true self was coming to the surface. So to answer your question, 
Uh, what do I think about it? Yeah, I no, think, I just was just kicking it around about it's just a thought that I be having sometimes just about people. Not yeah, no, nah, for sure. And like I, I, I fully agree with it. And I feel like most niggas aren't going to motherfucking actually ever really figure that out because yeah, they're, they're not gonna, gonna they're never they're gonna, gonna stop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then, and then they get dependent on that being with the broad. So it's like now every time she come over, I got to drink, exactly. or smoke weed, or you exactly. know, half of the time. That's why a lot of broads fuck with a certain dude because he got to say, you know, all these broads fuck with the weed. Yeah, exactly. He got the weed, so for sure. You know, it's it's just one. Of those have you noticed have you noticed too like the moment you stop drinking like for example with me i stopped drinking a lot of bitches that i used to fuck with just immediately got chipped off yeah because they knew that it's like okay when, we, when i hang out with this nigga he don't even drink no more man i, I had you know a broad, saying? uh you know one of the first times i stopped drinking and i was like you know i wasn't telling people i stopped drinking i was like oh i'm sick i can't really drink right now and she rescheduled us kicking it and i was <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it to drink. You know <laughs> while we think as men uh oh i need this alcohol to be myself or whatever women think the same way that's why they get drunk too so you never really think about it like most yeah. dudes that's why you got to get my course and learn how to talk to women without all of that because a lot of dudes develop a lot of drug habits for no reason other than they are trying to be this person they need to be to be comfortable enough to talk to women in public yep. and if you would have just learned to be yourself and be confident and be charismatic without that you wouldn't have to drink alcohol you wouldn't have to do pop those pills you wouldn't have to do drugs if you could just learn to be yourself exactly. so that's why i think it's very important for men to figure out how to talk to women and be they self because a lot of dudes have alcohol problems and all of these drug problems strictly because they got to do that just to talk to women exactly but going back to what you say women have the same problem you got to think about it man the reason men drink why do women drink everybody knows it's poison everybody feels bad the next day so why are they drinking yeah. there's some deficiencies and some insecurities that they have uh the same way as men do exactly you know so yeah. that's just another thing when you look at women look at women as you know your equal not above you you mm -hmm. know she got to put all this makeup on to feel good about herself she got to put this on she got to put that on she got to drink this alcohol just like you man she's not no better than you yeah you know she's a human being yeah these, these niggas be talking to these bras like she the president yeah. oh what should i say <laughs> what's acting like she motherfucking putin oh, I, that this shit can't go wrong you know what i'm saying like oh god you know, take, yeah stop acting like she's the motherfucking president and, yeah. talk to her. and that conversation is different when you realize she's just a human being just like you now you can have a real conversation now you can be yourself man it would be hard to be yourself if the president was in front of you had to have a conversation you're gonna be the most perfect charming person you could be but when you humanize somebody and that's what i'm saying like you're not you're not uh putting the bra beneath you you're just taking her off that pedestal and understanding yeah. she's a human being just like you exactly. and when you talk to her like that man you're gonna have a lot better connection because mm -hmm. all of these dudes are talking to her in a certain way that she don't respect that's fake that's phony that's why there's no real connection but if you see her as your equal as a human being just like you with insecurities with dreams with goals with aspirations with everything that you got she wants to do things in life she procrastinates too she puts her shoes on one foot at a time just like mm -hmm. you that conversation is different and you're gonna make a lot more connections talking to a woman like that exactly yeah and that's another thing too a lot of niggas coming to the course asking oh uh how do I keep a conversation? You're so good with keeping conversations going with bitches. It's because nigga, you're not you're paying attention to the titties on the day. You paying attention to the ass. You're not listening to what she's actually saying. Like you said, if you're actually paying attention, you're present. You're lit like you're letting her, you ask her a question. What do you do? And then she tells you. And you actually listen. You like you said, you'll really realize that she's just as human as you, and it makes the conversation yeah. flow. If you kick in with your homie, you're not thinking about anything exactly. but just being present. Exactly. So that's why the conversation flows. And that's why you gotta you know down first. But I say this also, man. When a broad like you, man, you can have a shitty conversation. She gonna carry it. Exactly. Man, when, when yeah. It'll be sometimes where I'd be like, damn, that was I, I didn't know what to say. I was having a shitty day. I didn't have a good conversation, but she was loving it. Exactly. She, why was she loving it? Cause she liked me. So it really right. didn't matter what I say. Exactly. It's really hard to fuck up something when you choosing who choosing you. She was gonna make that mm. shit work unless you was so off the fucking wall weirdo. It would. You didn't have to have the smoothest fucking conversation to a broad who already we, like you. And can we emphasize this shit one more time? I know yeah. we. I know you do it all the time. But number one rule, yeah, like she's like got me. to motherfucking like you. Yeah. Nigga, I need a bitch that like me so much she's willing hey, to hang hey, hey, listen, on the listen. side of a place. You get a broad who like you, you don't need no game. Hey, that's it. Everything, Everything falls else in falls into place. You know what I'm saying? If the bitch really like you, all that other shit falls into place. Because what we talk about on the, on, the, on the totem pole of importance, right? She got to like you. She's got to yeah. like you a lot. She's got to be useful, right? But like all these damn things before that comes before looks, uh, all of that shit takes it, care of itself. It, yeah, it takes care of itself, but these dudes, they skip that step. Exactly. She can't just like you. And that's like why you. I said it's the most, but can we emphasize thing. it? Yeah, we got to emphasize Cause, it. Because, nigga, it's the most, it really God, is the rule, most important one. thing. But you know what? You know what? Why I say, where I, where I mess up? Because I say like who likes you. So people think when I say like, no, 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 she can't just like you. She got to love your dirty draws. You can do no wrong in her eyes. She's going to overlook anything that you do. If she yeah. sees a mountain, she's going to turn it into a mm -hmm. molehill. That's what I mean when I say like who likes yeah. you. And I'm going to say this about what you said, and I think we got to get up out of here. Um, 
when it comes to talking to women. You're confident when you talk to women. Confidence comes from competency. You don't talk to women, so it's hard to talk to women. If yeah. I told you right now, hey, man, uh, it's an auditorium with a 1,000 people. Hey, man, I need you to get on stage. Most people couldn't do it. But if I told you in a year you got to do it, you could prepare. In a year, you'd be able to do it. Why? Because you would have practice and became competent. Exactly. You can't talk to women because you don't talk to women. Yep. It's that simple. You want to skip the step of doing it. It's not going to happen. Nigga's always and trying to skip need, the step. You, you need to get, get my, my, my How to Talk to Women course, right? Mm -hmm. and you need to learn to go outside and talk to women. You're going to feel a certain type of way. You're going to feel embarrassed. And eventually you're not going to anymore but most people are going to stop before they get to that point if 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 you watch a scary movie how many times can you watch it before you're not scared, <laughs> you're not anymore? scared anymore. so exactly. it's like this by the hundredth time you're no longer going to be scared mm -hmm. of that movie yep. right same thing with a woman so how long is it going to take you to get past that point are you going to be so scared after the third or fourth time you stop right right because you can get it all over with in a week's time if you was talking to 50 women a day by the, by the uh Hundredth rejection, you're gonna be like, well, that's nothing. Exactly. But dudes just don't do it. So they trying to skip steps, man. Yeah. I mean, and like I said, if you strip her down and you talk to her as what she is, man. But I mean, it, it, it's all psychological. That's yeah. why you got to work on yourself. That's why you got to build yourself up, and that's why you got to listen to me and you yeah. and, and, and look at this shit and realize, man, that bitch ain't nothing, man. Yeah. I don't care, man. Yeah. I don't care if I got denied by uh, by 99 women, right? It doesn't matter. I'm glad you denied me because I'm not looking for you. I'm looking for, <laughs> for my woman, that and that's me. not my exactly. woman. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm not tripping. And then when you're not putting in extra effort if you didn't have all of these cold ass lines and did all this you're not going to feel so bad because you put out so much and then got rejected exactly i'm not doing all that right i'm hey, hey what's up man? Nigga, right. hey how you doing yep. hey come here listen i'll do like this she might look she might tell me to come here or she might get up and come or she might act like she don't see it if she yeah. don't if she act like she don't see it i don't feel bad Make oh sure. that's not my woman i'm looking for my woman in this club be i'm like because the woman that like you she that's gonna be in enough. this whole club i know my bitch in here somewhere <laughs> I bitch in here somewhere, and I'm a finder. You okay, know what I'm okay, okay. If I gotta pull on every bitch shoulder in this motherfucker, yeah. all she gotta do is look at me. Right. And when she look at me, when I look at my bitch, I'm gonna know, and she gonna know. Right. And bro, that's happened to me before. I can remember when I was in Vegas, Spearmint Ryan on one of my bras I had for a long time. She's a stripper, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we was in Spearmint Ryan. I was with my uncle when the first time I went to Vegas. I was still a teenager, and man, I was in there doing my thing. I'm talking to this. Nope, 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 nope. I seen her. She seen me. Nigga was like, love at first sight. You're right. You could just and tell that, energetically. And, and that was my bra right. for like four years. We had a cold Ooh. ass run. We still cool to this day. Because why? That was my woman. Yeah. When she saw me, she was like, that's the finest nigga in the world. When I saw her, I'm like, that's the coldest bra in the world. You felt I'm, it. Yeah. So it's like, you're, I'm looking you for can't it. fake that. I'm looking for that. You're looking for the broad you want to chase. And oh that's why God. it never works. And that's oh why me and that God. girl, we had so much good times, bad times, ups and downs, an adventurous time. I look back on the fond memories with her because that was my bitch. You what do you what say saying? to the niggas that be like, oh, that don't happen often though? It's not supposed to. Okay. Like, I mean, unless you're a super fly, you know, and even still, like everybody got taste. And then, man, you don't put yourself in position to get chose like that. Right, exactly. So it's like, man, you don't even go outside. And then when you are outside, man, are you are you pulling on broad? You, you know, are you waving? Are you, you know, are you even putting yourself in position for, for your woman to even see you? Mm. You know what I'm saying? How can somebody mm. buy something they don't even know is for sale? Mm. You're not even outside for her to see you. A, a true player knows how to put himself in position to be discovered. Man, I'm going out to the club, not because I want to go to the club, because I'm trying to find my bitch. I'm, I'm trying to let my bitch find me. You know, my bitch is out there somewhere, and I got to put myself out there so she can find me. She has to discover me. How can she discover me if I'm hiding in the house? Exactly. You know exactly. what I'm saying? So, oh, and and, and in his bag, the bro. mindset of it is, man, back when I was really, you know, doing my thing, it was like I'll talk to 100 women a day. But the mindset, that's why I got the game guy mentality course, because you have to understand the mindset, otherwise you're gonna get broken. In the game, you understand it's only one out of 100 bras that's really gonna be a superstar and really fuck with you. So you're okay when you talk to 99 women and they don't fuck with you. That would break most dudes down. But if you're going into it at, that's just statistics. Hey, it's exactly. only going yeah, it's to be of one out of 100 yeah. that's gonna be my, man, come on. Yeah. That's just, it's just, just And that's with anything in life. So when you go into it like that, you're not tripping when a woman d d deny you. you you're no. not tripping when you say something and she don't say nothing back. You don't exactly. go, oh, fuck you, bitch. No, thank you. I don't want you to entertain me if you don't like me. If you exactly. don't like me, you're doing me a favor exactly. by letting me know exactly. so I can get on to the next. Right, so, right. But you know, man, we done gave y'all a whole lot of motherfucking game, game. nigga. I feel like I done said some shit that I might have to uh, cut out this motherfucker too, Right, because niggas going to have to charge, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Hey, this is Game Guy Golden, and this is another episode of Don't Hate the Player. And you got to learn the game. You feel me?